and CNN, I've got the clips, is actually basically saying that people deserved it because they dare have cartoons criticizing the prophet Muhammad. Well, we are a classically liberal society, and that doesn't mean we restrict free speech. It means, in the words of Thomas Jefferson, free speech, the First Amendment, is king. It is simply amazing to see CNN and MSNBC criticizing the people who are pretty mild who were putting on this event. We have the FBI claiming that ISIS has tentacles in all 50 states. We have Judicial Watch that I found to be very credible claiming that they found camps over the border. We've gone out and investigated, found huge mosques, you name it. Meanwhile, focus on the family head, Dr. Dobson's come out and said the collapse of Western civilization is now happening. And I agree with that statement. Someone who's been ringing the alarm bell for decades is Dr. Michael Savage, best-selling author, um, multiple PhD, uh, and of course, uh, syndicated radio host, michaelsavage.com, michaelsavage.wnd.com. He's a multimedia icon in the conservative movement. Dr. Savage holds a master's degree in medical botany and a second in medical uh, anthropology. Additionally, he earned his PhD from the University of California at Berkeley in epidemiology and nutrition sciences. He's the author of 25 books, including four New York Times bestsellers. He earned the coveted Freedom of Speech Award from Talkers Magazine in 2007. He's also banned in England for uh, criticizing radical Islam. And I've been basically told that I'll be banned if I don't watch myself. And now this is coming here. So I want to get into his new book, Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca. I know his previous book, Openly Criticizing China and Their Power Grabs, got censored. So it looks to me like, as I've already started reading, it's just excellent that he's basically putting what he thinks is going to happen into a novel. We'll see if I'm correct in a moment, but you need to get it from the multi-time, number one New York Times bestseller. Find it at Amazon.com, WND.com, you name it. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca. Uh, but so much to get into today, sir. Great to have you with us. Um, Got a little bit of reverb there, uh, getting his audio lined out. But uh, what do you make of the situation that just unfolded uh, up in Garland and the response to saying the First Amendment is to blame and, and, and nothing about the shooters that shot the cop? Oh, my friend, you know, we're getting a little feedback. So what I need to do here is turn off my speaker, I think. Alex, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. You've got the floor. Go ahead. Alex, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Go ahead. We're having a little technical problem. Tell me when uh, we're ready to go here, because I don't know if you're hearing me. Uh, we've got a little bit of feedback back and forth. We don't normally have problems with Skype, Dr. Savage. You, you, you go ahead and just have the floor. I want you to speak to what I was just talking about. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Alex, the thing is this. We've been penetrated, we've been infiltrated. How high up it goes is anyone's guess. We know that the president's middle name is not Jesus. We know that the military has been told to stand down. We know the police have been told to stand down. We know that there's only one sacred religion in the United States of America, and it isn't the founding religion. It's the invasive religion. And the fact of the matter is, the FBI director who warned us six weeks ago this was just before Hussein's uh, conference, anti-terrorism, counter-terrorism conference in Washington, where he invited Muslim groups. <clears throat> he disinvited the head of the FBI who said that ISIS is in 49 out of the 50 states. Why would he do that to the head of the FBI who warned us? There's yes, only one answer. Someone in that team in the White House is playing for the other side. They're not on our side. Now, of course, the good news here, Alex, is when I saw this terrible event last night, the good news is the beefy Texas cops killed a the scum. They, they wiped the scum off the planet and sent them to heaven where they can go rape, go rape babies. I guess that's their reward. They get to rape 72 ra babies in the next world. What a, what a religion. Isn't that great? Kill someone on this planet so you can rape 72 infants in the next world. Doesn't CNN find that uh, obscene and pornographic and sickening? 
What can I say to you that you don't already know, Alex? We know we're at war. They've been at war with us for a thousand years. The president has been, been, been at war with America from the time he, uh, I guess, what, left Colombia and discovered his Afro roots? When he was a kid, he didn't identify with this radical side. Read his own autobiography. Then he found out that by acting like a black radical, everyone kissed his feet. And look where he is today, so why should he stop now? He wasn't a radicalized young man, but he found out that the white people fell on their feet the minute he acted out the uh, Black Panther uh, game. Look where he is now. Why should he stop now? He has that scum, Al Sharpton, in the White House 50 times and no one says a word. The anti-police scum, Alex, uh, this is, I get apoplectic over this. Can you imagine if a right-wing president had won the presidency in 08, and shortly after winning, he invites the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan in and out of the White House for six years? Tell me what the vermin at CNN and MSNBC would be saying. Al Sharpton is the equivalent of the Ku Klux Klan on the other side. There he is. There's Ace walking to the plane. Cut that from the feed. Mr. Cool. Mr. Cool. Helicopter, he got Air Force One, he's got the biggest military in the world, and the country is dying. Maybe you can give one of those limp salutes now to the Marines. What is their end game, Dr. Savage? Clearly, I thought you were exaggerating seven years ago when you said they would destroy the country, and that this was going to be it, that they'd just destroy everything. Because I imagine that when they finally got power... That, that, that they would then do the rational thing and want to maintain it, uh, not even from a moral perspective. Why scuttle the country? Why wreck it? Why destroy it when they're in control of it? Well, I believe, Alex, that it's a, it's a combination of both willfulness and incompetence. There are those within the administration who go back to the 60s in mentality. Bring it all down, man. You know, then let's rebuild it in our own image. That's the, that's the communist view, the left-wing university view. Wreck it. Screw the patriarchy. Bring down the white man. You'll have paradise. That's one view. The other view is a bunch of morons who are college girls who know nothing, on drugs, raised on Adderall, parents who are psychotic. I can name three of them. Most of them speak for the Obama administration. One of them is the stupidest girl I've ever seen in my life. I call them Obama's sorority. You know who I'm talking about, that Marie Barf or Marie Harf? Oh, yeah, and Samantha Powers, all of them. Moronic, stupid college girls, sorority girls. They don't know what world they live in. They live in a sheltered bubble, and they think that they know the world. They know nothing. That's so what scares me is that they're starting wars all over the place. They openly armed Al-Qaeda. Now they call it ISIS. They claim they're fighting it, but they keep catching them, uh, you know, giving them arms shipments. Our own military said two years ago that they wouldn't be part of being the Air Force for Al-Qaeda. So now they've changed the narrative. Let me ask you this. Do you think they're going to be successful in their takeover plan? If this was a ball game, Dr. Savage, what's the score right now? Patriots versus the, the, the French Revolution crazies. Oh, the guillotines are ready. The guillotines are ready and they're greasing the skids for the blades. Uh, yeah, are they going to be successful? How much more successful can they be, Alex? Internment camps? I mean, what's next with this group of it, 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 ma maniacs? Don't you know, they have I, a I don't problem? I just turn it into, into the book, but I have to talk about Countdown to Mecca. Because no, no, I want to get to that. We're going to break in just a moment because I know it ties into it. But let me just ask you this then because the book's so important and, 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 I, and I want to promote it. But, but just the two minutes before we go to break, the police are super awake despite all their problems. Uh, the country's disintegrating. I mean, you know, what do you expect? The military, from my, what I've seen, is super awake to what's going on. Doesn't that uh, give the, the, the socialists, the globalists, a problem? Isn't that their Achilles heel? No, because Obama gutted all of the combat veterans who could have led a, a movement against an illegitimate government. He started it right after Benghazi. I named them in my last book. One general after the other was purged like Stalin purged them, only instead of shooting them, first they smeared the generals. He got drunk in Moscow. You hear this? He got drunk in Moscow, so they fired the chief of our nuclear arsenal, the man who knew how to run the nuclear uh, system. He was fired for getting drunk in Moscow. Another one was found with a gambling chip in his trousers after going gambling. I mean, if that was the, uh, the, the score here, they would have all quit. I guarantee they've done more than get drunk and go gambling. So no, they're gone. The police have been deballed by
by this illegitimate racist administration. Holder has the ball of the police. Look what they've done in various cities using the pretext of racism, all lies, to the ball of police. So, yeah, the police are there. They're brave and they're armed. The military is there. They're brave and they're armed. But who's going to lead them? Where, without a Napoleon, where do the troops go? Well, that's another point. That's why George Soros got caught, as you know, openly trying to fund the white instigators they send in to chant, you know, kill the pigs and all this, and then the, the, they get away with it. It's so clear they're trying to start a civil war. You know, remember my last book, Stop the Coming Civil War? Yes. Well, guess what? It started. It's, we don't have to talk about it. Has there been a civil war? Yeah, it's a slow-burning civil war. What do you think we're, we're looking at here? It's a race war. These are their shock troops. These are their shock troops. And, and they don't have the brown shirts yet. They don't have the armbands. But soon Obama could deputize them. Isn't that a natural army for him, Alex? It is. That's what he take called these, for, a national security the, force. Take the Crips and the Bloods, give them a green uniform, and give them a weapon. And they'll keep order in the streets, won't they? It's so crazy, and history is repeating itself. Uh, it's, it's just bizarro land. Dr. Michael Savage is our guest. We're going to come right back into his new book, Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca, Straight Ahead. I'm Alex Jones. Most talk show hosts do not have other talk show hosts on their shows, but I've been on Michael Savage's. He's had a lot of my reporters on his, and, and, and vice versa. Because I can tell you, at the end of the day, we probably agree with each other on about 90% of things. It doesn't matter. We want to have a country. I know I'm not speaking for him. I've listened to his show. I know what he says, and I'm on the same page. These are real totalitarians we're dealing with. It's about raw power. They're using a communist playbook, but they're fascist when it gets to the upper echelons. That's what Ted Cruz has said. He's called them liberal fascist, and they are. And Michael Savage, one of the smartest intellectuals out there when it comes to really understanding what we face, his last book came out a year ago. How to Stop the Coming Civil War. And now, 96% of Americans in a Gallup poll think a race war is coming. Listen, I'm not, I'm not kidding when I say that I, in the last few months, three times, have had people three times come up and say racial things to me in Austin, a very friendly town, living here most of my life. And, and it's happening all over the country, and it's all MSNBC and the White House. Meanwhile, we're being sold out to China. Michael Savage has a new book out, Countdown to Mecca. And Dr. Savage, um, I'm guessing, I haven't read the whole book yet, I know your last book got censored, unprecedented, because it was nonfiction and really criticized China. Uh, and and uh, now, am I guessing that you've put a lot of what you really think is going on into a fiction book, or what's yeah. happening? <laughs> That's why I went back to the novel format, because you can only go so far in, in speaking in a documentary fashion about reality. I have a radio show, and I have restrictions, as you do. We have various and sundry restrictions, meaning on how far we can go on a public broadcast. <clears throat> when it comes to fiction, though, I guess you can use your imagination still. The censors haven't gotten to it. So in Countdown to Mecca... I pose a certain theory that a group of patriotic generals get together and they see the scourge of Islam, what it's doing to the world, and they want to take care of the problem directly. So they plot to do something in Mecca. And the book is all about the general's plot. Now, these are families, these generals are not wild cards off the gutter. Three, four generations in military, highly educated VMI, West Point. So the dialogue between them, analyzing whether to do it, is, I think, very well done. And my hero, Jack Hatfield, gets wind of it in an obtuse manner. And he analyzes this and realizes that by doing harm to Mecca and killing mi millions of Muslims, you're going to set off a war that will never end. So he tries to stop the plot. Now, I will be castigated with this book by the vermin at MSNBC and CNN for saying the opposite of what the book says. The vermin, the solenterates, to not use a word that has too much connotation, we won't call Wolf Blitzer and company vermin. We won't call uh, MSNBC vermin, we'll call them solenterates. The solenterates will say, oh, he wants to blow up Mecca without having re read the book. It's the opposite. The whole book 
is a novelistic plot which shows intelligent people discussing such a doomsday scenario and saying, don't be crazy, it'll set the world afire. Sure, that's like Jade Helm. All he said is, is it's conditioning for military occupation for the Tea Party, which they admit, and the media says that I say Obama is going to invade Texas. They always deceive. Please continue. I want to read you a paragraph, Alex. I know that you're going to like it. So it's the generals are talking about it. It's two paragraphs long. And uh, one of them says to the other that they should do it. And the General Morton invites them to a shooting range at West Point to finish the plot. And the men say to him, what did you get us here for? And he says, I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve, Brooks quoted, as if General Morton hadn't spoken. Therefore, strike off their heads and strike off every fingertip of them. Who said that? He looked into the face of each general. Reynolds seemed to look back at him, but in fact, his gaze wavered between the general's eyebrows and eyelashes. Bullseye looked around like a soldier on point. Only Morton stared back defiantly, his lips tight. The Quran, sir, Morton replied, verse 812, just one of the more than 100 verses that call Muslims to war with what they call nonbelievers. General Brooks asked, and who do they call nonbelievers? Anyone who isn't Muslim, Reynolds interrupted. Quran 551 states that Muslims are not to take Jews and the Christians for friends. Allah describes them as unjust people, close quote. The Quran invokes kill the infidel 120 times, General Brooks said quietly almost to himself. He gazed at the empty sky. What kind of sane nation permits these people to practice such open hatred? Sir Morton said, I thought we were here to discuss Firebird. That's the generals in the discussion of why they're planning this. Michael Savage, quick break, long 18-minute segment coming up. I'm going to give you the floor to really drill into as much as you can tell us about this book that's now just coming out. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca, and as he said, the media is already coming out and spinning what the book actually covers. Stay with us. Radio host Michael Savage is our guest for the rest of the hour. MichaelSavage.com, the new book on the number one New York Times bestseller. Michael Savage is Countdown to Mecca. Available in bookstores everywhere and Amazon.com and MichaelSavage.com, WorldNetDaily.com, you name it. You should support him. You should support independent media that tries to get people thinking. And, and I'll be honest. Uh, if you go back 15 years ago, I saw the PNAC clash of civilizations, the neocons saying, we'll start a war with Islam because they've already started a war with us and have this big war and beat them. And I think that's kind of what Savage is getting into in the book. I haven't read it yet, only if 30 or 40 pages. It's excellent, like all his books. But that's basically a, 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 a more modern example in fiction of what's going on. But at the same time, I'm not what you'd call, to use a liberal term, Islamophobic. I know that there are Alawites and non-radical groups and, you know, nice people I went to college with or whatever. But the big, strong vein of Islam, funded by Saudi Arabia and others, is to conquer, is to take over, uh, is, I mean, they're killing Christians all over the world. The UN admits uh, in 2014, the worst year on record for Christians. I mean, and then I watched CNN, Anderson Cooper, praising the Muslim Brotherhood when they were blowing up churches every day, crucifying people upside down, and attacking the military with one of our greatest allies. So I see Obama working with Odinga, uh, his Muslim cousin in, in Kenya, uh, to try to overthrow that country. I mean, this is real. And is this really a double cross? Is this a triple cross? Uh, what is the larger plan? There are hundreds of Saudi princes worth billions apiece, some of them over $200 billion apiece. You hear the richest man in the world is Carlos Slim. That's not true. Uh, I mean, could it be that actually uh, we're, we're being overtaken? Because England, if you, they had thousands of kids in different cities being raped by Muslims, and they couldn't even report on it because that was seen as racist. Or, or is political correctness so strong that the left really doesn't understand what's happening? Michael Savage, get more into your book, into the generals, into what you break down, finish up that part, and then please answer my question about what the end game is, who you think these operatives might be, and what you think the establishment's doing, Michael Savage. You know, your questions are so good, Alex, as usual, that they have answers built into them. And, and it would be commentary upon your commentary for me to even answer them. You've said, you've said it all by asking the question. But, I mean, to embroider on it, 
is about all I can do. The fact of the matter is, either it's by design or by default that Islam is conquering the world. Make no mistake about it, they are conquering the world. We all know about Londonistan. We all know that the most popular young boy's name in, in England is Muhammad. Now, what sane nation on earth permits this to? How could a, a nation with such great dignity and great strength, founded by such powerful, crazed men that conquered most of the world, roll over like a bunch of pansies for this? How did this happen? Well, let's go back. The leader who let this happen said himself, I, I think it was Tony Blair, said, I made a mistake by promoting multiculturalism. He said that two years ago, remember? Oh, he made the mistake. Well, have they reversed it? Have they stopped importing Muslims from Pakistan? Have they stopped giving welfare to families with 12 children? Have they stopped the hate preachers from preaching? No, they banned Michael Savage from entering England. Have they said, oops, we're sorry? We didn't mean to ban you? No, they didn't say we're sorry. They didn't give me reparations for having banned me and denied me the access to England and the great dental care that I have been after all my life or the, great, <laughs> or the great cuisine of England. I mean, after all, I can't get fish and chips in America. You know how great their cuisine is. And I, I can't get my teeth fixed because I can't go to England. <laughs> the, lo the loss here is I love, I, love the Brit I love English society, British English society, England. The people I do love, the people are amazing. I, there's a certain wonderfulness about English people, at least they used to be when I went over there. I miss that. But the fact of the matter is, I'm not the only one banned from entering England. Some brave Israeli generals are banned from entering England. So I'm in very good company. And it's their loss. But the question is not about Michael, not about England. The question is what's coming here. That's all we care about. There's a huge difference between England being taken over in America. Uh, and it's both good and bad news. We're all, all armed to the teeth here. England has no weapons. They were disarmed by their liberals a long time ago, right? So this is the only thing that keeps the psychos, the uh, sorority in the White House in check, is fear of the masses with weapons. But don't worry, they're working on that plan. They got the uh, gangs in the streets of Baltimore, Ferguson, New York, and Philadelphia all riled up. They can always uh, deputize them and give them weapons. Or tell them to just bring out their AK-47s, since they already have them somewhere in their, in their mother's closet. Uh, so that's not good news. You're asking me what the solution is, Alex. If I knew the solution, it would have happened already. We had an election last November. That was the solution. Elections used to be the place to go. You went, I remember I used to say this on radio 15 years ago. You, you go to the ballot box or else, or else they're going to go to the bullet box. So we had a way to redress our grievances. We voted. We said, get rid of this bum in the White House. Get rid of the sorority of leftist fanatics. Get rid of the corruption. It stinks to high heaven. He's the most abusive president in American history, not in terms only of his politics, but the abuse of the finances of this administration. He has sullied the White House by inviting one lowlife after another in there for parties we're not even allowed to see. He abuses the taxpayer by flying on Air Force One on any whim without any accountability. What if Bush had gone off on Air Force One as often? Would Mrs. Bush have dared take the Air Force, Air Force Two or Three, on a junket with, a, with her well, mother? Well, look at the Clintons spending half the money they stole from the Haitian uh, kids for their own private jets and hotels and, and foreign donors. It's all illegal. They are above the law. The entire Democratic Party's above the law. And then John Boehner won't repeal Obamacare. The Supreme Court's about to rule that uh, marriage isn't sanctified. This is a crazy war. And what do all the so-called liberals think they're going to do when they finally crapped in the nest and ruined the country? I mean, these people have a death wish. Okay, we can agree on that, but that doesn't stop the problem. It doesn't. We had an election last November. The election was supposed to change the course of this society. It's, we said no to the communists running America. We said no to the socialists, the globalists, the Islamists. I call them the Democrat Socialist Islamist Party. That's what the DSI is. That's what the Democrat Party is today. Democrat Socialist Islamist Party. I've been saying it for three years. And America went to the polls and voted. The next day, the con man, the charlatan in the White House got up and basically said, drop dead. I don't care what you voted on. You ain't seen nothing yet. By the time of the next election, I'll make certain that there's so many immigrants in this country and that the gangs are riled up in the gutters that the white man will no longer have the majority in this country. Then I'll show you what this country really wants.
classic socialism with with, a, with with an elite in control of 20,000 nuclear weapons and space stations. I mean, it's just totally insane. Listen, if we brought the immigrants in and actually taught them Americana, Renaissance, crazed freedom, it wouldn't be an issue. But literally, I've, I grew up in Dallas. You know, in the 70s and 80s, I've never seen such racial tension, even in the sweet little town Austin. And I'm not whining about it three times the last two months uh, at night coming out of restaurants uh, or, or once down at Barton Springs this Saturday at like eight at night. I've had black people come up and just threaten me, and then they go threaten the next group of people and, and bare their teeth at me because I'm white. And I'm like, my God, what country did I just wake up in? How did this happen? I have no bad will against black people. I mean, it's just, it's mind control. Alex, it's Al Alex, come on, how did it happen? Obama's been working on this from the day he started. Him and Holder. Every speech they've given has fanned the flames of racial enmity. I have followed their speeches at colleges and high schools, it's constantly hearkening back to the civil rights movement and how black people used to be in the back of the bus and how your ancestors suffered. We were getting along. We were moving together in this society. There was a relative harmony in this country. And then this administration came along and we feared what would happen is happening. Alex, you know it's going to get much worse. You know they're ramping it up for the 2016 election. We all see that. You don't have to be a, an Einstein to see what this man is doing. You know, give him one credit. He's diabolically a genius. He really is diabolical. And, and you know, He's, I always say it's an elite running things. But as you know, there's different power structures. This really is a cancerous power structure that he actually believes their communist ideology. It's just crazy. Well, I, I, you know, a story just came out over the weekend about Fidel Castro's former bodyguard who said that he gave up on Fidel when he found that he was a coke, basically a cocaine dealer the revolutionary who fought alongside fidel castro said that he had to abandon castro because he found that he was nothing but a drug dealer using cuba as a transit point right in order to to fund the revolution so what does it have to do with here i don't know what does it have to do with here why are we opening up why are we opening up uh, uh channels with cuba all of a sudden where'd that come from who is really running america and why but we know it didn't start with uh, Obama. Come on, let's be real, Alex. In the last three months of George Bush's reign, I was not invited to the White House. Sean Hannity was, Rush Limbaugh was, and the other members of the Rush Limbaugh cartel. Remember now, on the other side, Alex, there's a cartel as well, and you're, you're a target of theirs, as am I. Am I oh, correct? I know. Oh, they're constantly engaged in dirty tricks. Fox News, Rush Limbaugh, uh, Hannity, they're all represented by, by um, Hannity and him and other lesser talkers that no one ever heard of, are represented by Limbaugh's brother. And that's the Rush cartel. They're the establishment Republicans who pretend they're not. They've been carrying water for the Republican Party for as long as I can remember. When Bush was president, they were invited to the White House. Remember that, Alex? Were yes. you invited? I wasn't. No. They were given a tour. I wasn't invited, but Hannity went there. Went, old, old Hannity went there. Old, uh, they all went in there. Well, they had private meetings with Bush, uh, but but uh, that's the thing. Where does the establishment blue blood country club group think they're going to be in their luxury golf courses when they bring in a violent revolution? How stupid are they? What is their problem? I don't think they think that far ahead. I think they live for today. They live for the comfort of today, the convenience of today. They believe there's a buffer between them and the masses and that whatever... Uh, hits the fan isn't going to hit them. They actually think they're insulated. Sounds like Marie we Antoinette. Well, yeah, as I said, the guillotines are are, are already being uh, released, you know, and they're getting them ready. And then I say that as I don't mean immediately. Well, Matt Drudge, as you know, tweeted that uh, America may fall soon. Uh, now uh, James Dobson is saying that. I mean, the really smart people can see what's going on. You don't have to be that smart now. I mean, this is really historically obvious. And and I got to be honest with you, it's I'm 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 really concerned about. I mean, I don't know how much time we've got left. What else? And then we get back into your book. What else do you think they might pull in his year and a half left in office? That's what I was getting at. Remember, at, toward the end of Bush's regime, it was it was September of that year, and I called him a fiscal socialist. I've been calling him that for three four months, and I was castigated for it by the Limbaugh's and the Hannitys. What do you mean fiscal socialist? They never heard the phrase. Well, that's what Bush was doing expanding, you know, spending. He went crazy. 
And I said, you've seen nothing yet. Watch what Bush does in the last three months of his regime. And what did he do? He busted the economy and gave us Obama. Remember, Obama was the, the savior who was going to save us from what had happened to the economy. Remember that? Yes. So it was, it was a, a transition after eight years of Republican ruin to give us eight years of Democrat ruin. That's the game, Alex. Eight years one gang, eight years the other gang, eight years one gang, eight years the other gang. Meanwhile, the economy is, is uh, apparently doing well. Is it? I don't know. We don't know. We don't really know. No, even with Cook numbers at 0.2%, and that's with unlimited free money to the establishment. I think you're right, though. And history shows this. You're a historian. Elites always become decadent and think they're invincible. And what I'm saying is, you ask, what, what will Obama likely do between now and there's a long time left? It's not just three months left. He has a lot of time, so we already see what's coming. The riots. He's got the gangs in the streets on his side. He's got them awakened. He's got them armed. They're armed to the teeth with illegal weapons, aren't they? And so you're going to see more race war right up until the Labor Day of 2016 for an obvious reason. And some conspiracy, conspiracist fear that he's going to declare martial law. I'm not so sure that he needs to because it doesn't matter whether he's in power or Hillary's in power. Or another demon cat. It doesn't matter. Ma O'Malley, whatever his name is. They're all the same. They're cut from the same cloth. They're run by the same controllers. It doesn't matter. They're going to take the street garbage. They're going to take the illegal immigrants. And they're going to warp the entire election. So it doesn't really matter who runs on the other side. So I don't think that it's going to come down to the camps and the internment and martial law. I don't believe so. I think it would upset the economy and the world for him to do that. Sure, and they've got that as an emergency fallback. They've got that as an emergency fallback. But rest assured, if they don't get everything they want, they might have the bravada, or what's a better word, the chutzpah, to push it. I, I mean, I, they're bold. Fortune favors the bold. I think they're capable of anything. Well, they are capable of anything because he's the smoothest con man America's ever seen in the White House. you got to admit he's smooth. He doesn't scream in German. He doesn't march to the Horst Vessel song, does he? But he's performing along the lines of any other petty dictator. We know what he is. We can see it, those of us who can smell it. He is Al Sharpton with a smoother act. Sure. So, in other words, strip away the veneer of Obama and look at that street rat, Al Sharpton, and that's who's running the country. Well, look at Al Sharpton's been at the White House over 50 times. I mean, Al Sharpton is a joke. A, a, a huge weirdo, gang member, FBI informant. Uh, who wears huge leisure shoot, suits uh, with long, cur I mean, curly hair. It, it, it really is a freak show. It'd be like having Benny Hill as president or something. It just, it just, none of it makes sense. Let me ask you this. I want to get back into the book here. Michael Savage uh, is our guest. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca, because that's the other big wild card. Is ISIS running around, stirred up by our ally, Saudi Arabia. You've got the whole new Cold War getting kicked off. Uh, you've got all these public statements about the Tea Party's the main enemy and gun owners are the main enemy and veterans are the main enemy. And then meanwhile, we just mentioned five weeks ago, hey, Jade Helm lists Texas as the enemy in Utah and Orange County. Um, it's, and then here's these training manuals that says, you know, it's even in Forbes and AP that the military is trying to take on the veterans and the Tea Party. We have a concern, so they have literally... Hundreds of publications a day saying, I'm saying Obama's going to invade Texas in July. Never said that. They never quote me saying it. They just lie. Why do you think they're running around like chickens with their head cut off about that? Well, we all know who they are. There's a very small, you mentioned Anderson Cooper. These are talentless people with no ratings. They see an independent guy like you, so what are they going to do? They see an independent guy like me who rose from the ashes. Like a phoenix, I rose from the ashes. I'm on over 250 of the biggest stations in the country. The Limbaugh cartel hates me because they can't understand how I got where I am without them. Fox News hates me. I call Megyn Kelly Martha Washington, sarcastically, <laughs> because she thinks she's the founding uh, mother of the nation. She is doing the bidding of the Islamists, as far as I can tell, especially after this event. They actually blamed Pamela Geller. For this event in Texas, didn't they? Yeah, they said it's her fault. They basically said she deserves it. Yeah, well, that tells you where they're at. The good news, Alex, is the scum are dead. They didn't injure anybody. The vermin, the converted filth, the converted jail garbage that did this is dead. Because a beefy, 
Texas security guards, beefy Texas cops who aren't going to take the crap. They're not going to put up with this garbage, this hatred for Christians, this hatred for America. They're not going to accept it. They blew them to Allah land. That's the good news. That's the future we should look to. All of the armed police in this country, you have a job. All of the military in this country, active or retired, who are armed to the teeth, you have a job. Stand up to this scum. Don't let them take away your legacy and don't let them steal your daughter's future. That's my answer. It tell really is true. They kill you. Well, it, it, it really is true that we ask, why is this elite doing this? They have a crazed, craven, sneaky will to conquer this republic, this renaissance. They want to mount America's head on their wall and they will work with any coalition to do it. And I got to say it, they're as mentally ill as Hitler. Uh, I mean, they really are mentally ill. I've for years been screaming for, if you go to work for a corporation, you have to pee in a cup. Why don't we demand that the president and all the members of the cabinet and all members of Congress go for a mandatory drug test every month? I'd like to know what they're on. That's a good what point. What drugs are they on? That's a good point. I want to shift gears into your book again because it ties into all of this. Uh, talk more about your book. Okay, I'll make it simple. You know, it's hard to describe a nonfiction, a, a book of, uh, you know, a novel. I did something different in this novel with the Jack Hatfield character. I created new characters, including, and this is an interesting one, a, a, a Jewish gangster, Saul Minsky, who actually works with Jack Hatfield to protect him from the CIA, who was trying to kill him because, see, Jack's trying to stop the bombing of Mecca. Or the, it's not bombing, actually. It's another technique. And he, the government then goes after Jack Hatfield. And he has to employ local gangsters to protect him. So there's new characters. And he's one of them. And Sammy's, uh, uh, his new brother, a new character is Jack Hatfield's brother, Sammy the Clown. Ex-Marine, uh, motorcycle accident, living on the proceeds of the motorcycle accident. He lives next door to a Russian prostitute who becomes a heroine in the book because she's invited by the generals to do her work. And she overhears the plot. She hears one word. And her name is... Anastasia, her eyes normally alert as those of a Nordic wolf seem wary and frightened. She's a great character, and I would say she's the hooker with the heart of gold character come back to life. So what I'm saying is I make it entertaining, Alex. You know, there's only so much people can take from you and I. It's, it's palatable only up to a point. That's another so question. That's another question. I used to could work 18 hours a day, literally many days, but it was killing me. And now I can only work about, you know, 10, 10 12, and, and I need to spend time with my family. This stuff is so sick now, the things they're doing, that I, I would go crazy if I continued to work as hard as I was. You, multi-time, you know, top supplement developer, top, you know, best-selling author, kind of launching a lot of the health revolution 35, 40 years ago. I'm not bragging for you. It's actually true for folks that don't follow it. I mean, you've made, you know, your family things you've deployed, some of the biggest products in the country. I don't want to you know, brag for you, but there's some of the biggest names out there. You don't talk about it on your show. Uh, you don't need money, but you're writing books constantly. You're on the air every day. But what do you do to unwind? <laughs> I sleep a lot. I'm serious. I, the minute the show is over, I go to sleep for thir 20, 30 minutes. It's a great technique, Alex. I need to do it. I try. Um... No, no, but here's the thing. Go in a dark room. It has to be a totally, absolute dark room, no light. Hold, it, hold your keys in your hand, on the side, in your hand, on the side of the bed. It's an old trick. And let yourself drift. The minute the keys hit the floor, it'll wake you up. It's no more than 12 minutes. That's all you need. You sleep more than 15, 12, 15 minutes, you're going to get groggy. I agree, yeah. Right? So 12 minutes, you do the Edison nap. That's number one. I am saturated in vitamins. I am swimming in ascorbate. I'm a big vitamin C man. I have been for years and, and many other things. I, uh, I mean, people know me. I talk about it. I love to eat. I do drink at night. And that helps me. Just completely turn it off. You have to turn it off. Yep. You have to turn the switch. Yeah, Alex, you cannot do Your wife probably doesn't want to hear you talk about this. Am I right? Yes. Right? She's stopping already. 
I, I mean, you have a family. So you do have to learn to turn that off or you'll go crazy. Oh, I do turn it off. And then people walk to me on the street and want to talk about this stuff. And I, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I just can't do it. I play. I ride a bicycle every day. And I do it in the way that uh, Mr. Kellogg did. You know, the man who created Kellogg's Corn Flakes. He would ride the bicycle one mile a day from his home to the plant in Battle Creek, Michigan, in a suit and tie, looking like Colonel Sanders. And he said... I'm riding the bicycle for equilibrium. In other words, we think we're supposed to ride the bicycle for a cardio, pumping our bodies to death. He saw it another way. I ride my bicycle for that balance. You know what I'm saying? Equilibrium? That's right, yeah. Yeah, just ride the bike a little, like a mile on a flat road. Get equilibrium. Try to see it in the Zen way, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in that way, honestly. And these are things, they're simple techniques, and also luck. You've got to be lucky, Alex. I'm over 70. I'm 73 years old. I should be dead by now. My father died, God rest his soul, at 53. My grandfather at 47. So I used to hang on, on hoping that in the old world, my great-grandfather lived. They said, no, he died at 45. I've had a gun to my head since I'm young. Always thought I'd be dead. It's what drove me into the nutrition field. It's what drove me to the islands, South Pacific islands, when people didn't even know where they were. Fiji water. Yeah, well, I was in Fiji before there was Fiji water, collecting medicinal <laughs> plants. Talking to folk healers. No, because you're right. I, was, I made the decision about four years ago to lose weight, get in shape, because it's the same thing. Like a lot of my great grandfathers and people were successful businessmen, but they all died at like 50 from heart attacks because they never slowed down. My dad's dad as well. So I've absolutely, that's why I just won't work as much as I did because I just, it's, it's up to other people to fight this as well, not just us. And, and, and it comes down to scum wants to conquer better men, better women. And, and, and if we let them conquer us, I guess they are better than us. Uh, the new book is excellent. I can't wait to read the whole thing. Thank you for giving us time. Today. I know you're a very busy man. Countdown to Mecca, Dr. Michael Savage. Uh, we salute your hard work promoting the Bill of Rights and Constitution and our sovereignty. And you've been proven a prophet of what you predicted happening. It's all unfortunately come true. Alex, I love your show. You're one of the best in the country, if not the best. And you are very strong. But remember, we all have our limits. You look good, by the way. I don't know what diet you're on. I want to know what it is. Well, I was, I was falling apart. I've, I've just done a lot of stuff. But God no. bless you. Thank you, Dr. Savage. Thank you, you Alex. You look great as well. Thank you. Very exciting interview. There he goes. We'll be back with the news and your calls. Visit Stay with us.